Stamp collectors, as well as people who have been around a while, might remember a three-cent American postage stamp issued in 1948. Now, I'm not sure what a three-cent stamp could be used for nowadays, but back then it did the trick nicely. This particular stamp is remarkable in several ways, but what strikes one is the image it portrays. We see there a large ship sinking to its watery grave beneath the sea. Just above the sinking ship are the portraits of four men in uniform with the caption, These Immortal Chaplains. I wonder how many people licking these stamps knew the story commemorated here. Certainly many ships and many persons had gone down during the terrible years of the recent World War. Perhaps the image of sinking ships was all too familiar from the newspapers and newsreels and was not even noticed anymore. But this particular ship, this particular disaster, these particular men had a unique and precious story to share a powerful witness to a more powerful love. A hint of this is given in the smaller print words to the right of the men's faces. Interfaith in action. These were four very different people, each with a different faith, different background, different interests. Lieutenant George Fox was a Methodist. Lieutenant Alexander Good, Jewish. Lieutenant John Washington, Catholic. While Lieutenant Clark Poling was of the Dutch Reformed Church. Two ministers, a rabbi, and a priest. They all responded to the call to serve their fellow human beings as chaplains during the dark days of war. They were soon to respond to another call as well. 902 people were aboard the Dorchester just past midnight, the 3rd of February, 1943, as she moved across icy waters from Newfoundland towards Greenland. These were dangerous waters, as German U-boats were known to be hiding in the waters below. Sure enough, a torpedo was fired and struck the starboard side far below the waterline. In less than 20 minutes, the Dorchester would be buried beneath the Atlantic, and 672 would die with her. Aboard the sinking ship, panic and chaos ensued, as people tried to jump into lifeboats and save themselves. The desperate cries and pleas of the wounded, frightened and dying, filled the frigid air. But another sound filled the air as well. The strong, loving voices of these four chaplains, comforting, consoling, encouraging, blessing, praying. A sailor tried to get back into his flooded cabin to retrieve a pair of gloves for the cold night in the life raft. The rabbi blocked the man's way to certain death. Don't worry, said the rabbi, adding not quite truth truthfully, I have two pair. He gave the man his own gloves, his only pair, for he had already decided he was not going to leave the sinking ship. The four chaplains helped the wounded to safety and organized the evacuation of as many people as possible. They found a store of life jackets and handed them out. 
Then, when there were no more left, the chaplains removed their own life jackets and gave them to four frightened young men. Said one survivor, It was the finest thing I have seen or hope to see this side of heaven. They helped as many as they could into lifeboats. Finally, as the ship went down, the four chaplains joined arms together and went down with it. As the ship sank to its watery grave, the last thing heard was a wonderful blend of Hebrew, Latin, and English rising to heaven in the prayers and hymns of these four brave men who loved to the end. Interfaith in Action When giving up their life jacket to save the life of another, it made no difference to them who that person was. They did not see in the other a fellow Catholic, a fellow Jew, a fellow Protestant. They saw only a fellow child of God. This was indeed interfaith in action. Much more than that, though, the story of the four chaplains is the story of interlove in action. The story of four children of God who together gave up their life for the sake of love, and so together found life in the God of all. Mm -hmm.